What's going on everybody? Gem Mint here for the first time in the new Gem Pyre with a statue unboxing and review. We have the Prime One Studio Poison Ivy Hush, one third scale. So excited to unbox. I've had this piece since El Paso, but I didn't have time to unbox and review before I left. So Poison Ivy went in transit and we're gonna be unboxing and reviewing her today. Before we jump into it, if you enjoy the content, hit that like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video. We are close to our 150,000 subscriber milestone and we're giving away the one fourth scale Deja Thoris from Sideshow. All you gotta do is leave a comment on this video. I'm gonna pick a random one once we reach it to draw a worldwide winner. With that out the way, let's jump into the unboxing. All right, so we have some advertisements first, showing us the black and gray Batman Hush. Always love this one. It was the first Batman Hush. On the back, showing an advertisement for the Arkham Poison Ivy. So, that's pretty funny. Here we have the package contents, and of course on the back, the assembly instructions, which you will need for this, because there are a lot of small pieces, and you wanna know where they fit. So, we'll use that, but let's take off the top layer first. You can already see a bunch of pieces, tissue paper, removing that. We can see poison ivy and all her vegetation. So let's start taking a look at some of these pieces close up. All right, first of all, you have these Venus flytrap type of monsters. They look amazing. They're plant-like, but they look ravenous like animals. And I love that glossiness around the flower part, the mouth part. You can see all the details and vines going along the branch, the tongue sticking out. And there are two of these guys. So here is the other one really gives you kind of Resident Evil monster vibes or something, man. They did an amazing job on these like ferocious plants. You got the little horns and stuff around them. Uh, then we have a bunch of these kind of viney type of leaves. They remind me of reptile tails, the way that their movement shows and they have that spiky look to them. There's like four or five of these pieces, really sharp. They really look menacing. Like these things will mess you up with these sharp horns on them. So. You can see great paint there from the greens to the yellows. Very realistic, great job on these little tendrils. And we have two little pieces of bark that'll go on the base. Here we have some more kind of pieces of log, but look at the moss, the green moss on top of the brown bark. Very realistic, man. They really did a great job on the paint. Uh, just like with these kind of branchy vines, which will wrap around poison ivy, they have green leaves on them and uh, some plant life. So this is a small piece of plant that will go on the proximity piece, uh, just like this briefcase here. Now, I haven't read Hush in years, and I've never seen the movie, so don't remember the significance of the briefcase or the cat, which we'll get to. Here we have a huge piece of tree bark. This really reminds me of the Swamp Thing piece that I just reviewed recently. Look at the shininess. It has a very swamp-like look to it. Huge piece, which will bring us on to Poison Ivy. I love how the head is attached. There is no neck seam. She looks great. I almost forgot. This is like one of the first one-third scale female characters I think I've ever had. The detail is amazing. The calligraphy of leaves going down her body, the texture of her jumpsuit, and the sculpted in movement of the fabric. The overall feminine look to her looks amazing. They killed the sculpt on this. All right, guys, so on to that second layer. Again, a bunch of pieces, a bunch of tissue paper. Let's remove that and we'll take a look at some of these bushes, right? These uh, plant-like things will go on the base. It's actually where the Venus flytrap monsters will rest in. So we'll see that during the assembly. Uh, on to my one piece that came in broken, that proximity piece, but it's a pretty clean break. We'll just super glue that thing together. But uh, yeah, this is the DX version and you can see it has like its own little padding on the bottom. The cat, Catwoman's cat, Isis, I believe in some respects. Again, forget the significance uh, based on the story. And a piece of concrete that will go into the base. Not really sure why this is here. Maybe just to show the plant life taking over the city life. And this beast, oh my gosh. This is like one of those Venus flytrap monsters, but it looks like a T-Rex. The way that its mouth opens, it's scary and alarming. Those red eyes, the glossiness which will key into that bigger log piece. Here's the bottom of the base. It's 362 out of 500 for the exclusive. Not much going on on the base, just some rubble, but we'll see more as we do this assembly. So concrete column, we'll stick that in there first. Then we'll move on to the base, big piece of swamp log, and we'll start adding things to that. So this one took a little bit of pressure to get this piece of bark in there. And <laughs> 
Getting the big T-Rex monster in there was a little tough as well. Some of these I really had to force in off camera. Uh, these little plant life vines or, or tendrils, if you will, went in pretty easily. They were color coded. And I think it has about five of them all together. Man, but look at the detail on that monster. All right, so you wrap those vines around poison ivy and then you key her in. The foot goes into the base. And this one I struggle with a little because there is a peg on her rear where we'll show that kind of, you know, keying in flush right here. So you wanna just make sure she's in there and then boom. All right, back to the base, more branches, more plants, uh, more vegetation, if you will. And you'll see, like I mentioned, putting that one monster right into the plant here. So, wow, that looks great. We'll do the second one, which is the bigger one coming together nicely. And then we'll start with that proximity piece, which has been glued together, putting the little bush there, putting the little cat, and then we'll swing it around to the top, put the briefcase on top. And one of those branches acts kind of like a latch to key in the briefcase to that little vine. So that's what I'm doing here, which you can't really see. But that's it for the assembly. Before we get into the full reveal, I wanna thank that Spider-Man booth for sponsoring this video. Make sure you're following them over on Whatnot for daily live comic book auctions. You could win CGC key issues and get some great exclusive variants from their sister site, Street Level Hero. If you haven't, you can download Whatnot in the link in the description. It'll actually give you a $10 credit that you can use towards your first purchase. All right, guys, here we go. Poison Ivy Hush in all her glory. Man, this is a great looking piece i haven't seen many reviews of this i kind of stayed away from it because i knew i was going to get her eventually i think the only time i've seen an unboxing was live it was a uh, junior statue collector so i forgot a lot of these details and what's funny is when we looked at the base up close i said there wasn't a lot going on just a lot of rubble which is true you have the bricks with the vines with the concrete but this is one of those pieces where you just keep building upon it right you have the big huge log that goes into this big vine monster. Like I said, it's like a plant version of a T-Rex. The base is super cool. It's got this dynamic movement, like this stuff is all happening and moving in real time, even though it's just a still piece. You do have some seams where the logs meet the base. Uh, the seams are pretty forgivable, and I'm surprised everything fit as well as it did for how intricate it was all keyed and all the pieces were. Some pieces that were tough, but overall, it fit pretty well. Moving up to Poison Ivy, again, I'm trying to think, have I had a one-third scale female statue before? I don't think so, man. Beautiful piece. Uh, the sculpt on the body, like they really captured her essence. Going up to that portrait, like I mentioned, no switch outs, no neck seams. I love that. You got the wild red hair moving everywhere. The softer face with that kind of lighter hue of green. Amazing paint on the lipstick, on the eyeliner, everything. It's like a makeup artist did the paint on this. <laughs> the vines going across her skin like i said it's almost like calligraphy uh the way that it's detailed as she's almost daintily leaning up against the limb of the big monster and petting its head it's a lot going on with this piece man uh, uh, amazing detail let's get some dimensions so the height is going to be the back of the base here so it's just shy of 30 inches tall the total width, if you're going widest point to widest, I want to say about 23 inches. And the depth, without the proximity piece, man, about 19 inches. So again, the exclusive is the proximity piece on the back. You have a little Easter egg from the story, which, like I said, I haven't read Hush since before I started the channel. And I never got around to watching the movie. I should definitely check it out. This piece retailed $1,200 and uh, has long been sold out. I was lucky enough to pick it up on the aftermarket. Uh, and I appreciate that, you know, everything came, <laughs> even though there was some damage. It was probably when I was moving it to this house from the old house. So, man, so much detail in this piece. Huge presence. Cannot wait to get her in display with the other one-third scale DC pieces. Let me know what you think about Poison Ivy Hush in the comments down below. Thank you for watching. Stay minty fresh. Peace.